I moved here, one of the few ways you can get a job that paid you to write, I wanted to write, was um, in newspapers. This is before the internet, so, you know, it was really narrow. And newspapers only had so many positions, and those positions usually got filled by somebody who had a lot more experience than you did. So to get experience, a lot of guys went to work on the hill, um, Capitol Hill, as what's it called a stringer. So in those days, every big, big newspaper from the state would have one guy, one reporter up on the hill, and he'd cover, they were really only interested in the big, big stories, those guys. Um, the little crappy stories, they could care less. So they hired, they brought, you went, you went there every morning, you said, you got anything? And the guy, so you, he'd say, look, they need something from back home. The one story I did was Oklahoma, they had hard ground to, be, it's an oil drilling state, which I didn't know. And uh, the ground was getting hard. There was no water in it or something. I don't, I don't know. And this congressman had worked on a bill to get them water for their ground to make it soft. So I went, and it was the same thing. You talk to the chief of staff, you get quotes, you snap a picture, maybe. Then you go back, you write it up, you hand it to the chief guy, the, the reporter on, on staff. And he'd touch it up a little bit and mail it in. And the reason you did this was you got a lot of experience, for one thing. You learned to write correctly. You learned, you know, in a synopsis form, newspaper form, uh, to make it succinct. And then also you could go then to a newspaper. There were a lot of newspapers around. Uh, they're dying out now. But you could go, and the, and the editors at these papers, they were, a, there was a lot of turnover because it's it's not a great job. And they would tell you, well, there's no glory in this thing, no Woodward and Bernstein, blah, blah, blah. And they'd tell you, you know, you're going to have to go up to the suburbs and do something about flooding from uh, septic tanks and that. So to show them that you were a stick to it person, that you were diverse, you'd have a resume of the stories you'd written. You'd say, look, here's one on hard ground in Oklahoma. Here's another one on lack of lobster opportunities in Cape Cod. So you had all these things. That's what they did. One of the guys I worked for occasionally was a British fellow who represented a, a British newspaper, but he was American. He'd been here for, this was in the late 70s. He'd been here for decades and decades. But he was very British, you know. He always wore a suit. And, he, and um, even in the god-awful D.C. heat, I got to talk to him, and he was telling me uh, about Al Capone, that when he first came here, he was sent down to Florida to cover President Herbert Hoover, who had gone to Florida for whatever. And he said they were in a, a hotel with a, in the lobby. It was a, a round lobby with an embankment of elevators, like, like six elevators, as an example. And President Hoover got off the elevator, and he came out into the lobby, and all the reporters rushed over, and they were shouting, yelling questions at him. Well, just then, the other door opens on another elevator, and Al Capone walks out, and one of the guys yells, It's Al. And they all leave and run over to Capone because he's big headlines. And Hoover, his mouth fell to the floor. He couldn't believe this had happened. And this is according to this British guy who watched because he was fascinated. He had just arrived to this country. He was fascinated. And he watched Hoover and he said Hoover's face turned crimson red. Hoover was a... We haven't had a president like him in a long time. Unfortunately... He is marked permanently as being related to the Great Depression, but he was a good president. He was a good administrator. He was a real down-to-earth guy. He came from a mining background, an engineering background, so he was a nuts and bolts guy. He didn't get uh, the flash of things, nor did he care for it. He was a smart man as well, and when he saw this, I think he just became livid, and shortly afterwards, the U.S. federal government went after Capone. Uh, so you'll read in history a lot of reasons why well, they went after Capone for this. But, you know, a lot of it is ego. D.C., man, it is all ego. And it, it with these guys, with these elected guys, from the president on down to the guy who irons the president's suit, you know. Um, and I think this is probably a more realistic view of why Capone finally got sunk, you know. Interesting story. I've always found it fascinating. I just wanted to make sure I 